My name is David. I'm joined by my dad, who is the co-host of Vital Moments, Ron Baker. Co-host. Wow. I'm the host. Notice what my name. Notice what my name says. Home alone. Yes, yeah. you are home alone. Your wife, my mother, all week, has left you. So if you are listening to this, this is a 20-minute podcast. Me. Okay. No, she hasn't left. Me. Yes, sorry. She's gone on vacation. <laughs> she, she's sorry. Yes. She has not left that sound bite. <laughs> we should clip that. My, your, yeah. your wife, my mom has left you. No, she is on vacation in Florida with some friends. So this is going to be yep. a 20 minute podcast on how to survive alone after 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> 33 years of marriage. Crazy. 33 years of marriage. <laughs> but no, we, uh, talking about the home though, we did start. Yeah, you know, beautiful segue right off the hop. Talking about the home, raising adults is our new series, and we are intentional about families. We love families, and we started this brand new series on raising adults, not raising children, raising kids, <laughs> raising adults. Why? Why the title of that, raising adults? Well, we talk about it in our services that uh, oftentimes in the middle of the uh, parenting journey, we lose sight of, of that end goal, that end result of releasing the child, right? And uh, which is understandable because in the middle of parenting, it can be extremely exhausting. Um, I read a quote this week or this morning, uh, um, parenting is part joy, part gladiator match or or something like that it was it was it was a funny little statement it was like yeah yeah, that yeah. Is funny. <laughs> I, I enjoy. Of, it wasn't gladiator or something else it's like a boxing match it feels like for me yeah. sometimes with all the punches it's like you're kind of like duking each other out you're like what what's going on <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah it was it was a great it was a great kickoff yeah. to the series I, I really think so and um, <laughs> i know for the parents that i chatted with and even the grandparents that were in the room, they were like, whoa, like this is this is something that we we weren't ready for. Like they're like they knew it was coming, but mm-hmm. it was just like this this heaviness of um not a dark heady, heaviness, but a joyful heaviness is like, whoa, we're like in this together. It's like a higher calling um to yeah. what does it mean to be the family. And you you actually spent some really good time. Um Parents should be students of your children. Uh, I really like yeah. that. Yeah, and I mean, we're a lot of things to our kids, right? And yeah. you're a lot of things to the girls, and, and you know, Tatum and Rue. And, and I, I, I believe that part of the responsibility of the parent, and which we often miss, is that I have to become a student of this child in order to help them understand their design given to them by God. Hmm. So there's a specific imprint or design that God has given to them. Characteristics, personalities, qualities, dreams, passions Hmm. that are built into this child from the time they were woven together or knit together in their mother's womb. And I, I really think oftentimes we miss this little piece right well i'm the parent i'm in charge i you know it is because i'm the parent it is what it is because i'm the parent you know i'm like i and it's like the subtlety of the journey of of being a student of your child so that um you can help them begin to shape ultimately what their destiny is ultimately what the what god has given them and designed them for right yeah, you had this beautiful, beautiful uh, quote. I'm going to read it because I, I wrote it down. I, I'm going to keep it close to my heart. You said, parents, I want you to hear me on this. The greatest gift you can give your children is a secure understanding of God's design for their life. Because often we hear people say, you can be whatever, you can do whatever you want uh, yeah. in life. And 
it, that's like you said, that's, that's actually a lie. Yeah, it is. A, it is a lie. And it's good intention because yeah. we want to encourage our kids. Like we want to encourage you and your brother. Um, there's definitely pieces of that, that are, that I understand the intent and the heart behind it, but telling a child they can be whatever they want or whoever they want is, is a big mistake in the sense that, um, it's just not true. Mm. And we talked about it a little bit with this idea of part of the reason we're seeing, um, and there's many reasons why, but part of the reason we see mental health issues amongst teenagers and young adults is they've been told all their lives, it could be whatever they want to be. And then they realize that they can. Mm. And, and that, that settles in at a deeper level. And I, I built it out. I, I believe you could build it, build it out theologically that even it's a lie from the enemy because the enemy wants to destroy the God given design in your child. And so telling them they can be whatever they want to be distracts them from being what they're supposed to be. Yeah. Uh -huh. Distracts them. Okay. Right. And that's what, that's what the evil one did in the form of a serpent and with, uh, you know, Adam and Eve, it was this, you know, God's holding something back from you. You can, you could, you know, you will know good and evil. Like he's trying to hold this back or he's trying to deceive them and, and, and partial truths. And, and I, and I believe that that's a dangerous parenting model, mm. you know, like, I, we knew that within you two, you and your brother was, we weren't going to tell you you could be whatever you want to be. We were, we were going to guide you into um, what are those qualities? What are those characteristics? What are the, what is, what is the personality? What is the passions and the dreams that we can bring to the forefront? What are we seeing evidence of? Now it's tough because as parents, you're going to see oftentimes a difficult quality in your child but ultimately it's a quality that you want in your child as they mm. become a teenager and an adult right well the stubbornness you know like you were i remember, i kind of you know i shared on sunday that when you were we were sending you to your room one time and you said on on the outside i'm going to my room on the inside i'm not but what's translated to that stubbornness or that determination or that clarity that you had in that moment is served you well as an adult, yeah. as you, as you have grown into what was evident there in mm -hmm. you. And, um, and that's the, that's the fine line, right? Um, that's the fine line that you walk as a parent. Yeah. And I think what is interesting for us to understand is, um, you said in your message at one point, like you and mom had to shift your parenting style. Yeah. From rules. I, I can't remember it right off the yeah. top of my head, but it was like rule-based parenting to um, value-based parenting. Yep. Yep. Right. And I think a lot of parents, we, we live in that rule-based for way too long and it can really push a child soon to be adult away from their parents because it's like i just got to follow rules it's just like but like give your thoughts on the value base because i think more families need to need this in their life and like hannah and i we've adopted this uh, and it came out of you and mom really living with strong mm -hmm. values of the home and wh why why do you think you have to shift from rules to values well what happens when when you begin that shift and that shift is, it's not like a hard line. It's a, it's a phase. <laughs> this process, weekend we're doing right? values now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From this weekend on, we're now living in values. No, what I, I believe, you know, cause you're still going to have rules in your home, mm -hmm. but values, you involve your children in the, in contributing to the values of the home. Mm -hmm. So they, you then now become, you're already a unit, but what, what you're involving your adolescent, your teenager in is they're now contributing to the environment. Mm -hmm. They're contributing to the culture. Um, um, how we treat one another is a value. We treat others the way we want to be treated. So when, you know, 13 or 14 and they're treating their little brother, or little sister poorly, mm -hmm. um, the rules are you don't do that. 
Hmm. Well, actually, if you begin to transition to a value-based home, then you realize that you can train this child to be a contributor to the family. You contribute to the health of the home. Like there were times when we had to have conversations with you guys and say, you're not contributing to our values. You're actually harming our, the culture in our home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, oftentimes we talk about this idea of smell in a home or we, I mean, we talk about smell in the church, but let me transition it to smell in our homes. There's a particular smell in a home that the values are uh, contributing to that smell, mm -hmm. right? You walk into a home where something beautiful has been cooked and there's an aroma, there's a sense. It just smells just so good. You can't wait to sit down. And if, a, if, a, if, you're, if you're still like a, if the kid's 17 and you're still parenting like they're six, then you can be guaranteed it's, there's, there's going to be constant tension. There's going to be constant mm -hmm. strife. And so the culture of the home becomes this toxic environment. But if I'm saying to you at 17 or 16 or 17, hey, you, you're actually contributing to the smell in this house. And right now it stinks. Right. So you, you're moving that transition and, and it's, it's, a, and I think parents, this is what we learned from, uh, we didn't parent alone. So we had other people that were contributing to the parenting process is realizing that there are stages of your child's growth that you have to shift how you parent. Mm. And, and that is like a moving target at times. I think the key to the shifting in your parenting style and growing with your kids. Yes, you're leading your kids. Yes, you're shaping them in ways to help them find their God-given design and identity that he's given them. But I think what I, what I realized yesterday, and I hope people picked it up if they were in the service or watching online and now they're going to sit in connect groups together, is I think the key to shifting, and you can kind of correct me on this, is actually taking your three things that you said seriously. Ask God to give you the ears yeah, to hear yeah. your, ch your children ask God to give you the eyes to see your children the way he sees them. And then also teach them to learn the whisper and the voice of God. Mm -hmm. I, when I was sitting there and like partaking in the message, I was like, Oh, if I'm going to shift, if I'm going to lead and disciple and guide, well, I need to make sure that my ears are God's ears for them. How does he hear their voice crying out? How does he mm -hmm. see them as they're going through these things? And if we can do that, I'll be able to help them hear the voice, hopefully, of God. And right. it was just this really like, it was like this light bulb moment for me of like, if I'm going to stay ahead of them in ways, but also walk with them, these three things are huge. And kind of give your experience of those three things as, as you walk that out. Because here's the thing, here's, well, it's before, the, this, before, yeah. before you go, because I think what's happening is a lot of parents are going on their own strength, own will, own thoughts, and they're forgetting that their child was a blessing and a gift from God. So he sees them the way he desires them to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and knowing that these children are a gift from God, um, like an arrow in a skilled warrior's hand, right? Yeah. And that's what we talked about. And it's, I, you know, it, it comes down to, and I don't know, I know and understand that not everyone in the services and even watching maybe are, yeah. are followers of Jesus and faith-based. So I'm going to say something that's going to exclude those who have, are not yet followers of Jesus. Parents who are followers of Jesus, our responsibility is to become a student of our ch children and train them to become a student of Jesus, hmm. an apprentice of Jesus. So it's a discipleship process. And, and I'm not talking about just taking your kid to church on Sunday, saying a prayer before you eat, or even reading a Bible verse after dinner, which is good and, and fine um, uh, and important. But I was thinking about this. I, I couldn't fit this example in, but I remember when your younger brother, Paul, had to shift schools. 
Mm. And uh, they wouldn't let him go to, we were out of district. So we every year got permission to go to this particular school. Grade seven rolls around, he's not allowed to go back. So your mom and, and Paul were devastated, like devastated. Um, and I remember sitting on our bed and guiding our family through the three of us at that time through um okay what yes this does suck it does but what is god going to do in this what good can god bring out of this what f- new friendships can be developed what you know what is it that we're going to learn in this process so it's the discipleship of hearing and being aware mm-hmm. no fun fact ultimately paul met his now his, wife he's now wife in, at that public school <laughs> at that public school in, in grade seven so all good came out of that mm-hmm. um but it i mean we got to remember that um it you know the the constant shifting and moving is about discipleship like mm-hmm. to release a child to adulthood like the skilled warrior with an arrow is towards a particular target and that is to be a resilient faith-filled person who has built their life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And what better foundation to give your child? Like parents that say to me, uh, well, I just want to be open to whatever spirituality they want or mm. whatever religion they want. And for me, it's kind of like, what? Like the greatest foundation mm. is built on Jesus Christ and his word. Why not give that to your child? Like that's mm-hmm. just the greatest thing you can give a kid. Well, met a woman, you know, met like, a woman this, this Sunday in Exeter. Her very Ooh. first time coming, she brings her little son in, and our oh first week that she's oh. there is we're talking about raising adults. And I talked to her before the service and after the service, and she goes, my life was the open spirituality, and it was so damaging to me. Oh, really? She said, I tried grabbing here, I tried grabbing there, and I felt so empty. Yeah. And she goes, thank goodness I met a guy, her now husband, who was a follower of Jesus and she got to meet the foundation of her life. Right. Right. She goes, my life was all about just being open. Yeah. And being open led to a lot of lies. And it was just so interesting for me to just experience someone's story and them say, this is the foundation of my life now. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, I want to find a church where I can raise up my child on a, a solid foundation and i was like yeah. oh my goodness like this is incredible she didn't follow it up with do you know a good church <laughs> no she said that she was excited that vital point was in her town <laughs> okay um, good Phew. yeah you're like <laughs> that was close but it was just a, a real life moment right yeah and a real story of someone that has walked the path of just being open and now saying, no, I've experienced Christ and I want this for my child as well. Mm-hmm. And to kind of, I guess, wrap this up is what would it look like if you didn't wait until like, oh, when they're a little bit older and they understand or mm-hmm. no, like you said, it, it, it starts now. Yeah. Like, yeah, it starts now. And if you even if you're someone that's single and desiring to be married one day and have a family Start praying now. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to parents that are going through it. Surround yourself in community. I, I, you and mom did such a good job of helping Paul and I understand that you, you do life in community. You have people like speak into your life financially, spiritually, um, yeah. family-wise, work-wise, everything. Because when you get well, into let, those let, moments, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let me jump in because this is we're not we're not going to be able to get to this in the series i don't think Mm -hmm. but we prayed we prayed that god would bring other people into your lives Mm -hmm. even as young teenagers and we involved a lot of other people and even to this day we still pray that god brings people and he does like the rabbi you know we joke about david campbell in life like he's Mm -hmm. he's that spiritual father that you needed that's different than me and it helps you become everything that god wants you to be yeah um so that's an important aspect too that we'll probably never get to in the series. But. Yeah, maybe one day. I think that's great. Okay. okay. Week one okay. wrapped up, ready to rock and roll. Connect groups, have yep. fun with this one. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I, th- I think this is such a good one because like the connect groups are just a wide mixture. 
And uh, I believe it's going to bring up some really good conversation for all connect groups. Yeah. So, okay, Ron, dad, thank you. Yep. Thanks. See you later, everyone. Bye. And peace out. <laughs> <laughs>